Chapter 14. Efren stared out of Lalo's car window, noticing how everyone here was busy with work, even the kids. He craned his neck to follow a group of boys loading plastic cranes, crates into a tiny shop. In the U.S., these same kids would be busy skateboarding around town or even burning off steam on the grass field of the neighborhood school. It's what our people do. We make do. Lalo's words stuck around like the musky odor in the car. Here we are, Lalo said, parking the car outside a wax museum. Efren leaned over, catching sight of the giant Arco staring down at him. A nervous excitement now filled him. Come on, said Lalo. Your mom must be worried mad about you. He pointed ahead. Don't worry, I'll catch up. Efren bolted out of the car, anxiously scanning the area around him. And when that didn't work, he turned to Lalo, who calmly jutted his chin at a rompompe-colored er, uh, taco loco restaurant. Over there. Without a blink, Efren uh, broke off into a, into a sprint and didn't stop until he stood below the club super sign. Of course, this made perfect sense to him. Where else would Ama go? She was super woman. Amused and equally excited, Efren rushed inside the restaurant where a lady behind a mosaic counter flattened out rolls of masa into perfectly shaped tortillas like Ama used to do back home. Hola, buenos dias. Algo de tomar? The lady offered with a warm smile. No, gracias, Efren answered, searching the Coca-Cola themed tables for Ama. Estoy buscando a alguien. Wait, are you Efren? she asked. Efren crinkled his forehead. Yes, but how? Your mother told me all about you. Her accent was thick, but her English was easy enough to follow. She went down to the Arco to look for you. Made me promise I'd let you let you know if you came by. He scampered down the street as fast as his legs could carry him. He ran directly under the huge landmark, huffing and puffing. Efren! Efren turned, catching sight of Ama, who was already running in his direction. Ama! Before he could say another word, Ama wrapped her arms around him and lifted him off the ground like she used to when he was younger. Efren closed his eyes and laughed as Ama began kissing every spot on his face. Ama held on for one last squeeze before letting go of Efren. Her glance shifted over to Lalo, who now stood by, hands in pocket, smiling. Efren pointed at him. Ama, this is my friend Lalo. He helped me get here. She sandwiched Lalo's hand between hers. Thank you. I was so worried that something had happened to him. Not this kid. He's got real smarts about him. Ama smiled and pointed toward the restaurant. Would you like to join us? Efren nodded at Lalo, who agreed. Ama and Efren sat together on the same side of the table. Guadalupe, she called. Podrías tomar nuestro, nuestra orden, por favor? The lady put down the masa and wiped her hands on her apron before coming over with a bowl of chips and salsa. Lalo dug into the salsa with the warm tortilla chips raving about the entire menu. He swore Ama had found one of the best places in all of TJ. Then he asked her where he, she was staying and how she liked the city. Ama looked even more tired than usual, but continued to smile, even as she went over the details of her deportation. By the time Guadalupe had brought in the tray of tacos covered in green sauce alongside grilled nopales and green onions, the topic had changed to coyotes and the dangers of trying to cross the border. I got ditched twice myself, Lalo said, squeezing lime on each of his tacos. Then I dropped four G's on some fake papers, but ended up getting arrested and sent back. Things are different now. Even if my daughter's old enough to petition on my behalf, they'll never give me permission, not with my record. He just stared at his food as if embarrassed to look Ama in the eye. There was an awkward moment and all Efren could do was swirl the straw in his jarrito soda. But there are others who can get me across the line, right? Ama asked, her words almost pleading. Yes, Lalo answered. That kind of stuff's done by organized groups, but it's very expensive. Efren reached under his shirt and handed Ama all the money. Speaking of, here you go, it's almost 1300. Lalo looked at Efren, then back to Ama. We're talking 10 to 15,000 with no guarantee. Ama's eyes welled up even as she held on to her smile. So all we need now is nine to 14,000 more. Like I told Efren, I know what it's like being separated from family. Don't worry, I'll help you. I've made some interesting con connections over the years. I can set something up for you, but this kind of money, he shook his head, it won't be through the customs line. Are you all right with that? Ama nodded nervously. Okay, let me see what I can set up for you. Yes, please, Efren chimed in. Lalo took one last massive bite and pulled out his phone before excusing himself. Ama scooted his, his, her chair closer to Efren and cupped her hands over his. Oh, mijo, tell me, how are the gemelos? Is Max behaving? Efren smiled and nodded. See, Ama, both are good. They ask about you a lot. 
She rested her palm over her heart. And your Afa, I worry about him so much. He's exactly like you. She took her index finger and ran it down Efren's nose. Bien guapos los dos. Efren blushed. He's doing fine. As much as he wanted to, he didn't mention anything about Afa's having taken on extra work or having hurt his hand or even the fact that he hadn't slept much since he'd been, she'd been taken away. She stared long and hard at Efren in the same Amma way she did whenever he brought home a perfect report card or lopsided paperweight she had no use for, even though she didn't even have a desk or own a desk. Y tu, mijo, how are you doing? Efren shrugged. Fine, I guess. I know all this has been incredibly hard on you, she said. Having to watch over your brother and sister, especially your brother, is not easy. Trust me, I know. But like your appa, you never complain. Somehow, you just do what needs to be done, whether it's fair to you or not. Efren blinked faster and tried breathing through his nose, anything to keep himself from tearing up. But when Amma reached for his hands and pulled them toward her and kissed them, he couldn't help it. Amma and Efren laughed as they each wiped away their tears. Look at us, she said, a pair of chillones. Lalo returned to the table, tucking his phone back into his pocket. It's all set. Tomorrow morning, 4 a.m. sharp. Amma gasped, sharing a nervous smile with Efren. Efren leaped out of the plastic chair and hugged Lalo, who uncomfortably hugged him back. It will be through the hills, though, she, he said. Is that okay? Hills, that will be easy, she turned to Efren and smiled. Did I ever mention how I got into California in the first place? Efren shook his head. Amma chuckled to herself like she did whenever she told one of her stories about growing up in Mexico. I came into the, U into the U.S. on the back of a motorcycle in 105 degree weather, she gestured to her belly, while well, seven months pregnant. Efren's eyes just about popped out. With me? Amma's smile shifted to the side of her face, just like Efren's did when he smiled. Si, en serio. I'm not kidding. The van that was supposed to bring me, o the bring me overheated. We were pretty much stuck in the middle of the desert with no food or water. No way, Efren said in total disbelief. Si, mijo. You were a real maceton. Had a head like a watermelon, but it worked out. One of the lookouts, a guy on a motorcycle, ended up having to give me a ride. Amma laughed again. Picture me on the back of a Harley Davidson sporting a huge barriga. It looked like I'd swallowed a beach ball. Efren shook his head. I can't believe Papa agreed to that. He didn't know, but this time Amma burst out laughing. You should have seen his face when he saw me pull up to the drop-off spot. I know it sounds crazy, but what choice did I have? Efren looked over at Lalo. Will my mom be safe? My friend promised he'd look after her. I trust him. Amma held up her glass her smile now a tad more comfortable, to a safe return to America. Both Lalo and Efren reached for their sodas, and to Lalo, Amma added, our guardian angel.